Hi there and welcome on my channel. What I want to do today is to shoot data for the BAT initiative, the Big Amateur Telescope. Perhaps you've seen it on the channel of Astro Biscuit. The target that has been chosen for the common period is NGC. Let me say this correct because um, Astro Biscuit mixed it up a few times, so now I'm confused. It's NGC 891. Is that correct? Or is it 871? Rory, what did you do to me? Come on. Uh, 891. That's it. And um, what I'm going to try to do tonight is to use the Edge HD to shoot this target, but I'm going to have to try to get it the best possible collimation, the best possible focus there is. Focus. That's the secret ingredient here. There's an issue with uh, the telescope because during the night the temperature drops and because the temperature drops the telescope is changing size actually. It's microscopic but still enough to push off the, the correct focus. But I've installed something new. Here it is. The HHD. Did you spot the secret ingredient already? Here we have it. I've installed a ZWOEAF, or otherwise known as the electric, ele let me read it, electronic automatic focuser. However, the automatic is not working because this is a Smith Cassegrain telescope. Smith Cassegrain telescopes focus by moving the big mirror which is about here in the telescope back and forth. The moment it moves back it shifts a little bit. They call it mirror flop. And because of this the automatic part of the EAF is thrown off and it is unable to complete the autofocus routine. No mate. Your issue has nothing to do with backlash. You mounted it wrong. Haven't you been paying attention to the video that I made about mounting the EAF on my Rasa? A and you also haven't been paying attention to that video of Astro Blender, I suppose, in which he specifically says not to remove that orange plate. Have you? I mean, this? Let me show you how it needs to be done, okay? What? You have that same stubby beard as I have. I don't mind those details. <sighs> Man. <sighs> okay, first let's make this mask go away. And let's undo the wrongly mounted bracket. So. So first of all, let's in introduce that ring again and uh, why well let me show you let's do like this so the EAF bracket does not retain the focuser inside the telescope and this is why you saw backlash this has nothing to do with the mirror flop it had to do with the focuser moving outside of the telescope until it finally hit the end of this uh, sleeve. So what we need to do is remove this piece from the telescope again. So this part does not 
retain the focuser. It does seem like it needs to fit inside the hole over here, but this ring really is necessary. Now we need to mount this back on, but as you see, this sleeve needs to go further than you had before. So this bracket can be mounted on the third position for an 8 inch SCT. And what we now can see, if I move the camera a bit, is that this sleeve is a little bit askew and this is also not nice so we need to loosen these two screws over here and make the mounting of the EEF move a bit to this direction so this sleeve becomes straight on the uh, focuser axis and we can also probably loosen these uh, uh, grub screws a bit so the uh, entire thing makes a nice tight fit so let's do that now. Oops. Also very important, there's a flat side to the shaft that comes out of the EAF. And one of the grub screws needs to uh, grab hold of that flat side. Otherwise, at some point it will slip and you will get awful backlash. Thank you, Plane, for ruining my audio. And there we have it. The telescope will point itself to NGC 891 and will auto center. Then it will start the autofocus routine. And with it, it tries to determine the star size of a star in the field of view and it will measure the size of this star. The point where this star is the smallest is the focus point. So for this bad project, I shot five second subs. Uh, I did use a filter in the image train, just plain old the camera in the uh, correct back focus position. So these individual subs will be full of shot noise, a very grainy result. So if you look at them individually, you do not see any details. If you speed up the display of the individual images, you will end up with yeah, a video kind of thing and you will already start to see more details as in the individual subs. Uh, your eyes are basically averaging out the, the shot noise. So this can also be done by using software like Cyril for instance. If you then combine all the 800 subs you will already have a quite nice result but 
This is obviously not what was intended with Lucky Imaging, because we only need to use those subs that have the best focus and the best um, yeah, details. So again, we can use this full width half maximum, That's basically the same thing as the uh, autofocus routine did, to find out the images within the sequence that have the smallest stars. We can also use Cyril again um, and filter out all images that are basically not good enough. Uh, we, we, we might end up with only 50 of, eight, of the 800 images that I shot. That doesn't matter. We will then again end up with a, a noisy image. But if many people combine their best of the best data, we should, in theory, be able to come up with a pretty impressive result. And this is what the BAT initiative is all about. So if you want to know more about the BAT initiative or uh, the lucky imaging techniques, or you want to see what the finished image will look like, then I highly suggest to go to the AstroBiscuit channel and subscribe to AstroBiscuit. On the website of AstroBiscuit, he will also have lots and lots of information on how this project is handled, how you can participate. So in the description below, you will find some links. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Oh, mate, your issue has nothing to do.